Movies. You guys watch movies, right? I'm gonna be counting down the top 10 of the year. But as 2019 is also the end of a decade, I'll be counting down the, de the best movies of the decade as well in a future video. A disclaimer, this list covers just theatrical releases, no indie films, and I didn't see every movie this year. Toy Story 4, for example, was the big one I missed, but I know enough about it for consideration. Just to be clear, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, Jumanji The Next Level, and Spies in Disguise will not be taken into consideration for this list, since they come out too late in the year for me to still be able to think about it. Also, this list is purely my opinion. If you don't agree, we can civilly discuss it. Anyway, let's get into it. There are minor spoilers for every movie on this list, but what I spoil, you might not care about. Let's go! The LEGO Movie 2, The Second Part. Now, I was really considering putting Captain Marvel in the spot, but a lot of other great MC mo MCU movies came out this year, and being the weakest one is kind of a letdown. But the original LEGO Movie was amazing, one of the greatest animated movies of all time in my opinion, so this movie had a lot to live up for. It is funny, it has great character development, and it has a twist villain that, while obvious that a twist is coming, doesn't cue you in on the actual villain bit until near the end. You think this transforming Tiffany Haddish voiced lady is the bad guy the whole time, but it's not. She's just misunderstood, and while that is normally a really dumb cliche in movies, this movie handles it pretty well. The backstory of Rex, the real bad guy, is kind of intense and makes a lot of sense from a character standpoint. You feel for the bad guy and get to understand this really well. This movie, while not being better than some of the others on this list, entertained my childish mind much more than most. Great job, Lego Movie 2. You did not disappoint. Five feet apart. I actually didn't see this movie in theaters, but I did see it afterwards. My sister saw it together at theaters with my mom, and when they came back, they were in tears, saying it was the best rom-com that they had ever seen. So, months later, in preparation for this, I decided to take a look at it, and it's actually amazing. This movie has tension, character building, great direction, a plot that makes sense, and characters that I actually like. I'm one of the many who feel that Cole Sprouse peaked with Sweet Life on Zack and Cody, uh, with Riverdale not doing any favors for him, but here, his performance is actually pretty good. I don't say this much about movies, but there are actually pretty good looking shots in this movie. The angles on some of these scenes just convey that like they're trying to climb up from nothing. From a cinematography standpoint, I can really appreciate it. I'm not going to spoil what happens, because this movie is something you really should see. I'm a huge sucker for movies, and watching this one just got me crying again. It's really touching and very realistic with how sick kids would fall in love. It's probably the smallest movie on this list, not making too much money, but despite that, it deserves its spot. Pokemon Detective Pikachu Now, a movie based on a video game sounds like a terrible idea. I mean, Mario Brothers and, you know, every other video game movie ever has kind of told us that that's true. But Pikachu really just makes this so good. The movie is, above all else, a comedy. It's not amazing, I rated it a 7 out of 10 personally, but it kept me the most ent entertained out of any on this list. It wasn't as hype as Endgame or as thought provoking as Joker, but it's funny and kept kids and adults alike entertained. It is easily the best video game movie to date, and it's easy to see why. It's colorful, it's witty, the titular character is actually really likable. Even Tim over here is likable and relatable. He just wants to do his own thing and doesn't really like his dad because he kinda abandoned him. There's something in Tim's character arc that we can all relate to, but overall, Pikachu is just adorable. Unless Sonic is perfect next year, I don't see it beating this. Toy Story 4 I haven't actually seen the full movie, which is probably what keeps it out of the top 5. What I've heard is amazing things about it. I've seen it be called the crown jewel of Pixar films, and I would probably agree. Toy Story has always held a special place in my heart, and the main reason I haven't seen it fully is because 3 ended so well. I don't want that ending to happen again. I'm not ready to move away from these characters for yet a second time, but it deserves its place here. Hotel Mumbai. Never mind about what I said earlier, this movie is the smallest one, but holy crap was it good. Remember the terrorist attack on the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel in Mumbai, India about 10 years ago? It was all over the news and it was a really big deal. That's what this movie's based on, and it perfectly encapsulates the pure fear they would have had during this situation. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, this movie is not for kids, like at all. People get unalived, and terrorism is shown very graphically. I'm not going to make jokes, the real world event this is based on is entirely serious, and it's not something you can make fun of. This movie is able to showcase what the people who were in the hotel when the attacks happened felt. The acting is amazing, the tension is real, the score is surprisingly good with many moments containing a low musical tone that is very immersive. This movie is really good. Not for kids, but nonetheless, it's really good.
How to Train Your Dragon 3 The Hidden World. A love letter to the How to Train Your Dragon series. This perfectly replicates the formula of the first two, with Hiccup having to overcome an obstacle that eventually ends up with him sacrificing part of himself for the greater good. I won't spoil it for those who haven't seen it, but it got its score in the high 90s on Rotten Tomatoes, and it completely deserves it. An amazing way to end the series. I really can't say much more. Shazam! Shazam isn't perfect, but for this movie, that's okay. The main character is really compelling and relatable. Zachary Levi's performance in this movie is actually very amazing, and he embodies a child stuck in a man's body. He acts as I would if I suddenly had superpowers, and it kept me constantly entertained. The villain of this movie is just okay, but that's not a big deal, as the villain's conflict with Shazam is less about the villain himself, and more about the fact that a villain even exists at all. It's actually a really good movie, and it'll keep you entertained. Highly recommended. Second best DC movie. Frozen 2 this is the newest movie on the list, and although it wasn't perfect, I'm judging this more on how it improved from the original. Frozen 1 is a good movie, don't get me wrong, but I cannot stand the first Frozen movie. For years, that was all anyone played, and all little girls talked about. Frozen 2 was funnier, has a better villain, being that there's no damn villain this time, and an overall better soundtrack in my opinion. From the first one, for the first time in forever is okay, but I really don't like Do You Wanna Build Snowman and Let It Go. In this one, all the songs are good. There are no obvious let it go types in here, but it's, it is way funnier than the first one. Olaf is actually funny instead of being ironically funny, which is always good. And Kristoff actually sings, which he didn't really do in the first one. Yay! All the MCU movies of this year bunched together because they might as well be the same thing. Let's start with Captain Marvel. Alright, Captain Marvel is... Eh, it's okay. Carol Danvers isn't the most relatable or compelling character, but Brie Larson does a pretty good job. Samuel Jackson is good, as always, and the villain being Jude Law does provide a nice, although somewhat foreseeable, twist. Avengers Endgame You can't even rate this as a movie. It was more of an event than it actually was a movie. I remember I saw it in the Thursday night previews, and it was easily the best experience in a movie theater I've ever had. So many amazing moments had people freaking out and screaming in the theater. When Cap picked up the hammer, when Natasha and Tony died, it was all incredible. Not even gonna lie, I even cried a little bit when that last shot of Steve finally getting to be with Peggy was shown off. It really made me feel like I was leaving behind my childhood, and doing it was a love letter to the entire MCU. Spider-Man Far From Home Peter is such a compelling character, and watching him as he dealt with Tony's death was as if I was dealing with Tony's death. The only problem was that they didn't really touch on it too much, which... I mean, although not being the most optimal way to deal with Tony's death, I could see why they did that. It was incredible to watch as Jake Gyllenhaal became Mysterio, and Mysterio became one of my favorite, if not my favorite, MCU villain. Alright, it's time for honorable mentions! Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is probably pretty good. Longshot was actually pretty funny. Abominable was okay. I didn't see too much of it, but it seemed alright. Aladdin uh, wasn't as bad as people said, but Dumbo was. Dumbo was terrible. The Secret Life of Pets 2, while not being too good, was easily 10 times as good as the original. Dora in the Lost City of Gold was okay, and Maleficent 2, I didn't see it. Number 1, Joker. Holy hell was Joker incredible. Joker is more than a movie. It is a movement. It proved that superhero movies could be less about action and more about the character themselves. It follows the story of one Arthur Fleck, who is a crazy guy, obviously. He isn't the Joker for most of the movie, but that's a good thing. Previous movies with the Joker focused on him being the bad guy, the Joker. But this movie shows us who he really is, who Arthur really is. It gives people a genuinely real experience of what mental health issues look like in our world. It's real, it's scary, and it pings with many people. It clicks with me in a way no other movie has, giving me a sense of appreciation for the art of filmmaking. I can tell it's because of who I am. My family heavily disagrees with me on Movie of the Year, but I'm not looking through this as a fan. I'm looking at it as a film enthusiast and filmmaker. Todd Phillips, I'm talking to you right here. You have amazed and stunned me with this movie, and it deserves to succeed as much as it did. I promise, once it comes out on digital retailers, I will pick apart this movie and watch it with a true appreciation for what it accomplished. It deserves the Oscar for Best Picture. When I watch it again, I'll put on my happy face.
So, overall, 2019 was a pretty big year for movies. We got the end of Phase 3 of the MCU, the end of Toy Story, the end of How to Train Your Dragon, and so many more great ends. In addition, we got some great starts and sequels, from Joker to Shazam, from Frozen 2 and Spider-Man. These movies all did great and proved that 2019 was quite a year to beat. Maybe now we should see if there's another year this decade that beats it. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'm really happy uh, to finally have this video done. Uh, if you guys hit the like button and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, part 2 of sorts will be coming out next week, uh, Best Movies of the Decade. And I hope you guys can watch that as well. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, let me know down below which movie was your favorite of 2019, and I'll see you guys next time. Stay schwinky. Bye. Dab.